Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brothers and sisters. Something that we know about in the deen is dhikr, you know, where you repeat alhamdulillah over and over and over and over again. You repeat la ilaha illallah over and over and over again. And if you're anything like me, you may have done it a few times, but it, it probably didn't, you know, didn't hit. But the thing with dhikr is that it only really works if you're already in a, I'd say, receptive state, an open state, a calm state. So the best time to perform dhikr, and, and I'm not even going to say my own opinion here, I think it was even said, it was narrated by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to do dhikr after your prayer. You do the dhikr right after your prayer. Now, why is this? Because when you do your prayer, before your prayer, you're in a mentally chaotic state. You're working, you're doing whatever you, you, you consumed in the dunya, right? And then the prayer comes in and it comes in very beautifully and very perfectly to pull you out of this, reground yourself. Usually after that first prayer, some people need even more. Some people need to reflect a bit more after the prayer Then some people need to do this in the prayer. But usually the dhikr is after the prayer, not before, after the prayer. You can do dhikr any time, really. Mm -hmm. But from what I understand, it is recommended after the prayer. Now, once you are in that calm, grounded state, and then you start to perform a dhikr, you almost start to get lost in the dhikr. Why would anyone want this? Well, it's because one of the best connections that you can have. I mean, you're, you're repeating something that's, that's pure. It's allowing you to connect to the most high in a way that's different. It's different than the connection that you receive from the prayer, from mm -hmm. self-reflection. And it's something that like you have to experience yourself to actually understand what it is. Because mm -hmm. even me saying it right now, I'm trying to find the words to really explain like what happens when you get into that, that deep state of dhikr. And it's, it's words don't do it justice. My I've bad. never been in that deep state, bro, yet. I've only just done dhikr. But for me, it's it's a way to like put the salah in its own accolade above everything else in my life, you know? Usually people do dunya, 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 and they, they go right into salah as soon as they're done, go right back into dunya. For me, what I found works is I like to take a few minutes before salah, even a few seconds, just, you know, reflect, ponder. And then as soon as I finish salah, I take my time. And then I sit down and I say, subhanAllah, 33 times, alhamdulillah, 33 times. Allahu Akbar 34 times. And it's, it's pretty effective, bro. At the worst, it just gives me time after the salah to like still be there, still sit there, not just get up and go back to dunya. But at best, so much barakah in that, you know? When I first met Rami, bro, I was like, this man says mashallah so many times, alhamdulillah so many times, bro. Why does he do that? I was genuinely like curious because I wasn't too on deen back then. Mm -hmm. And mashallah, just looking back at it now, bro, even the way me and you talk now, it's so different, bro. Like, yeah. we keep the remembrance of Allah you know, very near to our conversation. The conversation is mm -hmm. always revolving around Allah, you know? And I think in that way, it prevents a lot of evil and things that shouldn't be said from being said. And that's the difference, too. Like, when we say subhanallah, mashallah, alhamdulillah, this is kind of dhikr in and of itself throughout the day, but it's not like that repeated dhikr where you're saying it like over and over and you get into like almost like a trance. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's more so like saying it and it's keeping, like you said, it's keeping the remembrance of Allah there. I'd say it's like there's categories, there's like levels to dhikr. Oh, you know? definitely, bro. There's athkar as well, which is like yeah. having time. Athkar is just the plural of dhikr, but. It's it's basically setting time, morning, athkar, evening athkar, where you just prioritize only dhikr, bro. Yeah, with that being said, we just want to make this video to give you all a reminder. That's all we can do is just remind. So we're going to make this video again, give you a nah, reminder. Bro, we're not going to end this because in Ramadan, not only should we be doing a lot of dhikr, bro, we should be doing a lot of community work too, you know? And alhamdulillah, you know, this day and age, we're so lucky, bro. We're so fortunate that even if we can't build a masjid ourselves, even if we can't go and do the hard work ourselves, even if we can't feed the needy and feed the poor ourselves, even if we can't help vulnerable groups ourselves, we can help someone that's going to help them. We can support someone that's going to help them. And that's why we partnered up with Masjid Al-Furqan, going above and beyond helping these communities, helping those in need. So inshallah, links in the description. Your support is very much appreciated. And assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.